Hmm. Data communication is the transmission of data from one location or device to another for direct use or further processing. Now, your communication system is made up of hardware, software, and communication facilities. Without all these components, your data communication would not be possible. Now, just as the components for a computer system where the hardware device is needed for the software device to function and vice versa, it is the same for your data communication. So, what is a communication device, you may ask? Communication device is a hardware, which means physical device, capable of transmitting data between a sending device and a receiving device. So it would be similar to your post office. Your post office would be the means by which you would transmit your information from one location to another. So from here on, we're going to look on some communication devices that are used on a network. Now these devices are not limited to, and there may be other devices that are used on a network. It is now up to you to research some. Alright, so what is a modem? Now your modem serves two purposes. To convert analog data to digital and digital data to analog. Why? Your standard telephone line can only transmit analog data, which is not understood by your computer or electronic devices. So when you send data from one device to the next via your telephone line, your modem is going to be that mediator. It is going to take the digital data that is sent from the computer converted to analog so that it can be transmitted over the telephone lines. After it is that it has been transmitted and upon reaching the receiving modem, it is going to take that analog data and then convert it back to digital form. Now the word modem is short for modulator, so the MO, and demodulator, DEM, hence the name modem. Now, there are many different types of modems. You can find your integrated services digital network modem. There's also what we call ADSL, which stands for Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line. And these are the new types of modems or cable modems that you will find in your home. I'm going to ask that you do some research on these three types of modems so that we may have further discussion on them. Consider yourself stuck in traffic. You have two routes. You have one which is a continue on the route that you are in which is heavy in terms of traffic or to find an alternate path which is shorter and will get you um, to your destination in the shortest time possible. That is the purpose of your router. Now your router is a physical um, appliance that passes information be between two or more small computer networks to analyze a given data packet destination IP address to calculate the best way for it to reach its destination. A data packet is like you sending a package. It is the item that you want to transmit or the data, the sender's um, information and also the receiver's information. So you sending information from one point to the next, but which route is the best route for you to send it? And your router will do the calculation as it relates to a network. Network interface controller, network interface controller card, expansion card, computer circuit board, network card, 
LAN card, network adapter, network adapter card. Now these are terms that are used interchangeably for the network interface card. Now, what is it? Your network interface card is what allows your device to connect to a network. Now, this particular card sits on the motherboard of your computer and can also be an external outlet. Your hub is a central or common connection point for all your devices in a network. It is basically where all your devices um, meet. Now your hub contains multiple ports as seen in the image here and it serves as a central connection for all network equipment and can handle a data type known as frames. Now your frames carry your data your hub can also serve as a router. If you have been to a restaurant, or which most of us have, we know the purpose of servers at the restaurant. Now think about a computer that does the very same thing on a network. Now your server is where you have one or more computers that handle all network request services. Um, this type of server is called your host computer. Normally once this computer goes down, then the other computers on the network will not have access to the data stored on it. This type of server controls the access to other hardware such as printer, software, and other resources on the network such as documents and provide a centralized storage area for programs. Now there are different types of servers depending on what you would want to be done. So you have organizations that would have a file server which is used to store and manage files, a print server which manages printers and print jobs that you have in an organization, there can be also a database server which stores and provides access to a database, a bank of data, or a network server which manages network traffic or activities to ensure that the network stays productive.